there's a I don't know I want to say Jill but it could also be Gil I'm not sure where you're from Gas. wow I was wrong Bow Valley hello okay good a couple okay looks like a couple of representative represent, representatives sorry kind of from all over um oh okay nice nice yeah so just feel free uh Dan a few a bit of this will be redundant for you just because you were on the U7 call, but that's fine. It's good to hear things twice. And then just for everybody else, my name is Alana Fittis. Hi, nice to meet you if I haven't yet. Um, and we're just gonna chat about the changes that have been made to the U11 rules um kind of throughout Canada and I guess here in Alberta. So one of the main things that I just want to talk about quickly, I just need to change my screen sharing here. Hopefully I know how to do this. Okay, um, so one of the new initiatives that we're really pushing right now is called the half a game rule. Um, if you know about this, that's fine. Well, let's talk about it again. And if you don't, then um, this is a good little arena to kind of get started on it. So what this half a game rule is, um, it's an initiative where we're guaranteeing that every player, um, regardless of their skill, age level, or what team they're on, um, is guaranteed half of a, to play half of a game um, every day um, through accum an accumulation of minutes, which can happen through rolling substitutions. So the, what's really important about this is that um, as coaches and also as parents, is you just want to get the message out that this new initiative that we're really pushing forward is so we can allow players the opportunity to play um, because we're looking to really push sort of a development mindset. So it's, it's a game or it's a rule that's been rolled out in England as well as New Zealand and in Scotland and in Wales with a lot of um, really positive results in terms of player engagement and player development. And it's also something, um, and so I'm excited about it for us because um, especially at the U11 age grade, which I'm ass assuming there's mostly fair play anyways, but this is just a really good opportunity to kind of um, check ourselves as coaches and as parents that we're allowing every player to play um, uh, regardless of what the outcome is. So that's kind of one thing that is really exciting about. There are resources if you're kind of wondering, like, how do I get to know more about the half a game rule? There's um, England Rugby, which I'll, I'll include this, I'll send this out to everybody. England Rugby has some videos on the half a game um, and it has an entire list of questions where it tells you more about it and kind of how do we um, implement it. So um, yeah, so that's what the half a game rule is that we're implementing across all age grades. For U11 specifically, let me figure out if I can change my screen sharing back Ooh. okay so um rugby canada said they would be sending out the official um fancy document that they have with the rule changes but i'm i'm not sure if it's out yet i'm in orlando right now so i could have just missed a few emails um but they do they have released an explanatory document about the rule changes so that's just what we're going to talk about um really quickly um, and then I really want to open it up to any sort of discussion around these rules, what's the rationale for them, and if you have any questions on like how we can implement this as coaches or as administrators, please feel free to ask. So what is the Rugby Canada explanatory document? So it's, oh, do I even have it? It's essentially just a document that explains all the rules and it's in one area and or it's in one big PDF. And then so you can flip to whatever your age grade is and just focus on those rules. Um, so if you have any questions about it, you do have a resource, so you don't just have to memorize all the new rules that are coming out with the U11s. Um, and I'll just show you an example of the RC document in a few minutes, I just have to pull it up on my computer here. Um, so this is pulled straight from the document, actually. So the rules for U11 for a transition to contact um, is, where ideally we want eight per team, but you can have nine. Um, and if if all else fails, you just want to match numbers where possible. Um, and as well as balance playing players and abilities. I'm um, talking about playing time for single game and festivals, 
um, which necessarily isn't necessarily our concern, but it's just good to know. Like I said, rolling substitution, um, coach is not necessarily on field, but safety issues you can be, um, as long as you discuss it kind of with each other prior. Um, an important change, I th think, yeah, is in regards to um, some of the tackles. So um, it, the, the we're really pushing for a below the waist tackle um, with the responsibility of the game coach or whoever the, the game manager on field is to manage the high tackles. Um, and so to communicate with the players to lower tackle height. Um, so in this, there's um, a red, amber, and green zone for tackle height, where um, red is the shoulders and above, and that's obviously a no-go zone. And then amber is um, between shoulders and hips, which is um, it's an okay zone kind of for tackling, but then we're really pushing for the green zone. And as coaches, it, that's something that we can for sure manage within the game, just to remind our players that um, to keep the tackles low. Um, yeah, so that's pretty easy. I think we're all pretty aware on that. Pretty standard. This rock on through. Um, and here are the main changes, I believe. Um, the first is in consideration with the scrum. So just take a second and read that. I'm just going to pull up the Rugby Canada document just to make sure that I have all of these. Correct. Mm -hmm. oh, of course, I can't find the document. Um, Ah, okay, there we go. I got the doc up so I can kind of refer back to this whenever. So, okay. So regarding the scrum in U11, um, and keep in mind, I didn't, I haven't coached U11. So um, if you guys just have any questions or, or anything, feel free to pipe in. Um, so the, in previous years, so in 2018, it was just a 3v3 uncontested. Um, still uncontested, that's the same now but what we're moving forward is the nearest four players joining and so it doesn't matter who it is so really promoting everyone playing a variety of positions so um when there's a knock on or an infringement happens just whoever's on the field just pull whoever's closest two props and a hooker um and one dummy half uh the stipulation for the scrum half is that they must pass the attacking one must pass so they cannot pick and go um and then the opposition scrum half uh, cannot challenge either. So they have to let a pass from the base of the scrum happen to allow for um, a pack, uh, the first, second, and third receiver outside of the scrum to attack. Um, defense is to be back three meters rather than five um, with an encouragement. And this one I think is really important, important especially at U11. We really want to encourage um, 30 seconds time limit for the scrum to be set. So um, in this, so if there's an infringement or a knock on, we kind of just want to get away from standing around and waiting and a lot of time off task for the players. We rather, we want to encourage them to be engaged and moving fast and getting to the scrum as quickly as possible. Um, so really pushing for that 30 seconds to set up a scrum and just like kind of get the game moving. Um, and if, there are excessive delays in the scrum formation. So if one team is repeatedly taking ages and ages to set up the scrum, just um, calling a free kick and then turning over possession to the opposition team um, in that way. Uh, and I understand that obviously U11 in the first couple days or first couple um, weeks of play, there'll be a lot of learning and it might be um, a little bit slower, but this is, if we really work on the, encouraging the scrum to be set up quickly within 30 seconds and then pulling in those two props and a hooker, like the nearest four, I think it'll really speed up the U11 game and just allow for more opportunities um, for kids to kind of get playing in different positions. And that's exactly what we want. Um, any questions or comments or thoughts on the, the, 
this changes for the scrum laws to this? Is it is it brand new information or is it does it seem pretty pretty standard, pretty easy to understand? I think it's pretty standard, Alana. Yeah, thanks, Dan. What was it like last year? Like, do you was there anything with around the scrum laws, or was it just like whatever happened? Yeah, there was no. There was just about the only thing was uncontested. Yeah. I don't think anyone ever really was like, oh, this guy's a prop, so they ran him. And I think it was just always whoever was close went in there. So. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So then this is just putting it more into words, kind of what was already happening. So yeah. that's good. Cool. Um, the next key, let's see, let's go computer. Cool. The next key change, um, or maybe explanation, what do I know? Um, with the line out is going to 2v2, um, uncontested where the nearest, again, you just pull in the nearest four players to join the line out. Um, um, with the, just a kind of similar to the scrum. Um, and similar in that it's also 30 second time limit for a line out to be thrown from the mark or I'll say, um, mm, what's it called? Not a penalty. Uh, free kick. There you go. My brain is slow. Wow. 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 I'm way behind right now. Uh, or else a free kick. So just in, again, encouraging quick play off of the line out. Um, I'm promoting everyone playing in a variety of positions just to jump on in there and just kind of see what's happening. Um, that's pretty standard in the ruck. So um, the previous rules were that one player from each team were to bind in contact over the ball, but with no push and then no pick and go from supporting um, from support player. They can only pass. So this is adapted a little, changed a little to it's one v one contested. Obviously, they they must enter the ruck from their own side of the ball and remain on their feet, just as a standard ruck rule. Um, and should a second player enter the ruck from the defensive team, like it's not the end of the world. It's just that team must stop stop pushing to allow the attacking team to win. So it's it's a 1v1 contested, but if at any point it turns into a 2v1, it just turns into uncontested just to stop and kind of control the safety around the situation there. Um, again, this is to encourage a fast game. So if no players are in the ruck and the ball is moved, you can just play on. So I was speaking with um, a coach out in Ontario with the U11 laws, and he was saying that um, in some situations there would be a tackle and then the whole game would be stopped to – um, set up the ruck rather than just like letting the play roll on as you would in a normal game. And um, he said that was just awful. So I'm not sure if it happened here in Alberta, but um, it's important that we put it in there that yes, if there's a tackle, we, we want to encourage a one v one ruck, but if it's not there, then we just um, play on and let the kids run into space as much as possible. Um, and then another little important part is that, on defense they are allowed to turn over the ball or to poach granted if it's a 1v1 situation only so that's pretty cool little building on from the previous um rocking laws we um any questions with that or that is that pretty standard um pretty cool idea with the rocking there I think it's this interesting there because it's, it's a couple of changes this year. Like, I know most of the games I was involved in, we didn't have a line out, but I think that's quite cool having that now. Yeah. Uh, just are we going to worry? We won't worry much about throws being too straight. It's probably going to have them pass the line rather than throw. Right. Yeah, like it'll. It's just. Um, I think it's just to or it's. Like just to get them like a little bit more used to like setting up of a lineup. So when you go into U thirteen, you're not so like shell shocked. Yeah. So yeah, nearest four players is uncontested. Just as unless obviously they pass to the other team, and I mean I would just let that play on. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, is a lineup set five minutes in still, or is it adapted? Um, that's a good question, Chris. Let me just see if I can. If I can open this explanatory document, um, because what I tried to do was just 
Oh my goodness. Oh, it's a disaster right now. My computer's <laughs> broken. Um, what I tried to do was just pull the main rules out, but obviously I may have missed some. So give me a quick second here. Do, do, do. U11 is on page. Let's go. Zoom. New share. Barbie Canada document. There we go. So let's check it out. So this is a document for those of you who haven't seen it. Pretty cool. U11 transition to contact is on page 15 to 19. Playing time, blah, blah, blah. Knock ons. Tackles. Oh, wow, great editing there. Kicking line out. The nearest four players, defense must be three meters back, attacking scrum, 30 seconds. Um, no. So adapted, yes. So that's actually a really good point. Um, I would, because it's not in there as well. Yep, Chris, absolutely. Um, so this explanatory document was sent out to um, Greg at the CRU. So he should have sent it out to everybody else, but I can just um, resend it to you as well. No big deal. Um, but yeah, so with the line outs, not five meters in, I would say maybe go three meters in or just like a couple of steps because you're playing on the smaller field. Um, but more so just to get them kind of in the setup place and then just like see what happens. So, yeah. Um, and then because it's, it's uncontested, we don't have to worry about a proper like hooker thrower going down the tunnel, kind of like we chatted, just like get it in, see what we do. Um, and then what else we were talking about? We were talking about the 1v1 contested ruck. This is a cool little thing. Um, what's important here, I think, with the ruck and also the tackle, um, I know there's been um, some safety communication, a little bit of concern around when do we, um, like, how do we progressive, progressively add tackles into the game? Does it start right off the hop or are we going to kind of, like roll it in. And I think that's a really, what the main, like what's really important here is that coaches communicating prior to a match to determine if um, their players need more of a gradual introduction to the tackle. So more of like an assist to the ground or if you can just go straight into tackling. Um, because I know, you know, some teams on one week, even if it's about five weeks in, they might have, you know, the majority of new players. So we obviously want to keep that environment safe. And I just think it's really important that, we just keep this discussion as coaches between each other prior to the game of um, development option for learning and just that the tackle and the, and the ruck are really, um, we want to be really sensitive around the safety in those situations. So just being really aware of who you're working with and not being afraid to adapt these rules based on the people that we have. So, yeah. Cool. Let's, See what our next change is. What do I have on here? Kick and open play. Okay, let's go back to my little PowerPoint here. So this is um, definitely a new rule. Um, from my understanding, anyways, it's, and I am really, really excited about it. So um, the previous rule regarding kicking is that the kicking the ball out of hand is provi provided, um, is permitted, sorry, preventing the kick takes place only within five meters of the defending try line. Um, and that is now changed. <laughs> so kicking in hand, or sorry, kicking open plate is allowed, but only from hands. You could only punt it. So you cannot just kick the ball along, uh, along the ground excessively. So obviously um, within the game, if you like, kick the ball and it rolls a little bit on the ground and then you're able to kind of recover and play like that's allowed, but staying away from, um, you know, just like the ping pong or the, the, the table tennis or soccer of just like kicking the ball excessively all around. And it's a real hectic mess. So kind of more constraining that to um, a few kicks on the ground, not excessive, but mostly kick and open plays allowed from only from hand, but anywhere within the field. Um, and then a rule on this is that open field kicks, they cannot go straight out of play um, or into 
touch at the, uh, the, the bad, dead ball line. So because we're on a smaller field, we don't just want to, uh, and we're allowing the kids more opportunities to kick. We don't, obviously don't want them to just be booting the ball or wherever they want. Um, so if they do kick it and it just goes straight out of touch, um, I would say it's, it's then a free kick from, to the opposition from where the ball was kicked. So I would say maybe take this with a little bit of like um, game management, like a little bit of a, like a grain of salt where obviously if a, a kid is attempting to kick it and they just, it just happens to flub or there or whatever, maybe you could play a line off, off of that. But if a kid is intentionally, intentionally just kicking it out of bounds and obviously apply this sanction. Yes, Chris, onside of rules apply to kicks. Because otherwise, if you were, if there was no one side rules, then it would just be, it would be hectic. I mean, funny, but it would be obscene <laughs> of like what would happen. But yes, on side rules apply. Um, so, just going to, oh, this is a fun consideration. Um, discussing with a coach if a try from a kick is worth more than one point. Um, which I think is pretty fun. So if, you know, you're working with the U11 crew and one kid does a cool little grub or like a chip and chase and that maybe he gets like, or she gets more points for scoring that try from a kind of a cool kick. So just an option to see if you want to promote a little bit more of a kicking game in your kids or not. That's really fun. Um, so any thoughts or, or whatnot on the kicking and open play? I know it's a, it's a, it is a different change, but I'm, I'm personally pretty excited about it because I think, um, I don't know. I know when I was 11 years old, I really liked kicking. So this just seems like it'd be a great rule for me really. So that's why I'm excited about it. I'd agree. I'd agree. I'd agree. The kids are probably almost happier when we do some kicking at practice than, than any. Yeah. So it's probably a good idea. Yeah, absolutely. There is, um, I'm just looking at the kid, the Rugby Canada document, um, and there's a little bit, there's a few more rules. Kick and open play. Um, so again, I love from hand. Oh, never mind. I was looking at um, the restarts, kicking on the restarts. So yeah, so it is pretty cool, kind of exciting about that. Um, so I just, I'm excited to see kind of what happens with that rule. Uh, Okay, restarts. So the new rule here, let's go to this for restarts, um, is that, or previously it was, um, if the ball is kicked dead, it's turned over to the opposition team at halftime. So there wasn't really any considerations about the restart rule, but now, um, a little bit more clarification for kickoffs and restarts after score. So players can punt or drop kick, but the ball must travel seven meters. Um, and the kicking teams cannot start chasing their own kick until it has traveled seven meters. So you can't, so just to give a little bit more of the time for the catching team to kind of receive it. Um, still the same rule about if the ball is kicked through the back of the end goal or short of the bounds, a free kick for the opposition at half. Um, so I'm not sure if this was if this was more of like a like a, a rule of thumb or a gentleman's rule about how far the ball must travel, but now it's a little bit more concrete. So um, obviously we can't quick kick 10 meters because the fields are smaller. But if we just um, allowing the player the choice to punt or drop kick, it goes seven. Then um, it's a pretty cool kind of little explanation or stipulation on that. Ooh, and then there's some considerations here. This is fun. Um, maybe changing the kicker for each restart. If um, coaches don't do that, or it's just kind of a consideration for a coach, that way everyone gets an opportunity to kick. Um, or challenging the player um, that if they're already really skilled at punting, that you challenge them to drop kick only, or vice versa, what have you. Um, so kind of just a really cool, cool little consideration for the restarts there. Mm, just. So yeah, any questions on that, on that or 
that's pretty good. We can kind of rock on. I'm happy to rock on. Um, ooh, ooh. Rock on. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, I'm just going to flip over quick to the Rugby Canada doc document just to see if there's any rules I missed. Um, I think that pretty much covers them all. Um, 3v3 uncontested, blah, 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 line out. Okay. Um, on penalties, so tap and pass, no kicking for touch, uh, no requesting a scrum option. Um, so really just tap and pass for all of them. I'm not sure if this was a rule before, but I think that's just kind of important to touch on. And then some suggestions for the field setup. So as you can see, this document's pretty handy. Obviously that needs to be fixed because if, if ever you're at um, a game and you're unsure of what to do, just, you can just pull this out and then just have a quick chat with the coaches or the officials or what have you, and then um, kind of discuss what's going on. Pretty cool. Um, and then the last thing that we I wanted to discuss was a little bit of resources. So in case you're unaware, there is a rookie rugby resource um, for coaches, which has a wide variety of um, practice plans and games and ideas for new parents or kids. And you can just check out that website. Um, and then there's some, some videos on England rugby who've also um, similarly adapted their laws, um, actually very similarly to what we have, um, but they've got some really cool videos and some explanation for it. So we'll just have a quick gander at the U11 video, but just know that some of the rules are slightly different. So um, the video is more for like an understanding of how the game would look if you kind of have no idea what's going on. Let's just have a, see what a little video will look like. Do, do, do. Share this. So this is the website. So it's pretty cool. In case you didn't know, it's got um, some, it's got videos for U7, under eight, under nine. For them, that's where the tackle is introduced. Um, so obviously you can have a look at that, but let's look at the under 11 video. See, they're only about a minute long, so pretty easy. Let's just see what this is like. Under right, so we are under 11s, so our game now is how many aside on the field of play? How many aside on the field of play? Nine. Nine? Brilliant. Okay. Um, do we have people who are set forwards and set backs and things like that? Rob? No. 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 When we have a scrum, if we have a scrum, it will be the nearest three players who go into that scrum and the next nearest who will become a scrum half. Contested or not contested? Uncontested. Uncontested in terms of pushing, but, Jess? Both hookers can. Both hookers can strike can. for the ball. Okay. But what about ruck and maul situation? What rules have we got in terms of people there? Johnny? Uh, people after the tackle. So the tackler or the person who's been tackled plus two extra from each side. If you catch somebody's kick, somebody kicks it your way and you catch the other team's kick, you can just run it back or you can call for a mark wherever you are on the pitch which means that you get a bit of time to have a free pass from there if you drop the kick and fumble it forward it doesn't count as a knock on you still get the scrum even though it's the reds who've knocked it forward it's a scrum and it's a red ball because it's yep. from a kick really that's to encourage the kicking side to make sure they kick it into space so you if you are going to kick it you're not kicking it to someone because you actually hand the advantage to the other team Okay, cool. Um, that was actually my first time watching the U11 video because I just really watched the U7 and the U9 before. Um, so obviously they have a little bit different rules, but kind of some considerations that I think is important for us as like as coaches going in. So um, you can obviously discuss with the other coach your ideas on um, 
the kicking or the knocking from attempting to catch a kick like that maybe that's not a turnover or um, you can talk about the mark rules. So um, I really encourage um, just like small little adaptations that you think are, that you think are important for your coaches to take on that you can add in um, just because it, I think it adds a little bit of creativity to our coaching as also as well as to our games. So, yeah. Um, and that's kind of all I got. Not really much else to talk about. Does anybody have any like really important questions that they um, want to chuck in or we all, or like you can unmute, maybe say anything you want to, or we can just whatever, rock on out of here. I don't care either. No, I think once again, really good, Alana. I appreciate you putting this on. It's well, great stuff. No problem. You know, I was, I was always hoping more. Thanks, Karen. Always hoping that a little bit like more people will come, but I think, cool. Yeah. I'm excited about that too. I think it's good that we even have a few people here and then you can just share this with as many people as you can, obviously, because the more the message, the message that get out there is better. So yeah. Do that. Um, does anybody else, if anybody else wants me to email me this presentation and a few, um, any other information that I have, please put your email in the group chat right now. And then I can just include you in my distribution list of any and all information that I send out, um, regarding coach development and, and rule changes and whatnot. So yeah. Yeah, Dan, I have your email. <laughs> Cool. Cool. Well, also else. Cool, cool, cool. Um, well, if that's everything, then I'll just, I can just wait a few minutes or people just chuck it in the chat. But other than that, um, we can all go on our merry ways. Thanks a lot. I enjoy the uh, Florida sun. Yeah, sure. Well, it's only going to be at 34 tomorrow. So, <laughs> <laughs> sounds good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Catch you later. Bye. Bye. Yeah, thanks, Gary. I will enjoy Orlando.